Thank you everybody for tuning in to Pick Up New Mexico. I'm your host, Isaiah. And today we have a dedicated public servant, um, Mr. Mayor Keller. And we wanna hear about your life, your vision for the city and how you are getting young people engaged in politics and social issues. So thank you for tuning in, Mayor Keller. Hey, it's great to be here. And just thanks for all you guys do to highlight you know, our city and our state. And also in this case, bring in some awesome interns. Yes, exactly, exactly. We'll get to the interns soon. Okay. We'll intern soon. But we are here in Command Central. This is like the Situation Room of Albuquerque. Yeah? It is. This okay. was, I lived in here like all COVID. Oh, I mean, Matt. oh wow. And that's not that much of an exaggeration. Yeah. Uh, every day I was right here Netflix. talking to our community. A lot different. But yeah, I guess it's Situation Room. Is this where you all were when you heard of MG allegedly gunslinging? This was a shocker. There are serious allegations of gun trafficking involving former Bernalillo County Sheriff Manny Gonzalez and his former undersheriff Rudy Mora. Federal investigators say they're connected to a scheme to illegally buy and sell more than a thousand fully automatic rifles. In the campaign, there were all these people, these donors who were associated with like gun shops and stuff. And I could never figure it out. I'd be like, look, every every department has to buy weapons. Like, I yeah. understand that. But like, I was like, this is so weird. Yeah. That must have been why. So you have an intern program with UNM. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so this particular program is uh, the Mayor's Select Internship Program. And uh, these students get to rotate through a couple of departments over the course of the year. So it's awesome. They get like the sampler platter. Um, of what government's like. They, I think, always come away with an appreciation just for like the frontline worker. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we have 7,000 employees at Albuquerque and uh, they do things for our city like literally every day. And all of it's important, I think, just by definition of a being city government. So we appreciate it. And the internship's a great way to get exposed to that. Exactly. And is it, a, is it free labor? Is it paid? What kind of? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, man. I think you get credit. Yeah. Okay, yeah, credit, so they get credit. credit. Yeah. Okay, so which you are you all in the same department or different departments? Different departments. Okay. Can we go through that really quick? What department are you working for? Yeah. So for the first eight weeks, I was in the Department of Arts and Culture. Okay. Um, helping out down there. And what was what did you like about the Arts and Culture Department? Um, I really liked how different it was. Like we were always doing something new, and then it was very in the community. So a lot of my meetings happened at like the Balloon Museum or the Albuquerque Museum. So that was really cool to get to go out there. So, what department are you working in? Um, I was in the city clerk's office for the first eight weeks, and I worked really on researching um, cases revol involving the Inspection of Public Records Act. Um, and I really liked it because it's like you know it's. Um, the government's job to be transparent with people and I actually kind of got to see the behind the scenes of like you know why it's sometimes hard to get public records or why sometimes it's easy and like see that process. Well my first rotation I was with DTI uh, Department of Innovation and Technology I think yeah Innovation and Technology and now I'm with the mayor's office but uh, my first rotation was really interesting because I got to see a lot of the city website and how much information it has for like entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, it lets you know what their plans are. And you said you're in the mayor's office now. Yes, just are started you... uh, like literally last week. So yeah. Oh, last so, week. Yeah, so now we're just getting to know like okay. legislation. Are you all <laughs> down and your head banging already? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Everyone's so friendly and so willing to help, but uh, God, there's just so much information out there. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to say, sorry, I wore my hair down so we can headbang at the oh, end of the interview, nice. so. Yeah, I love it. Like Wayne and Garth. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I'll be Wayne, you'll be Garth. There you go. <laughs> Which department are you working in? Yeah, so I spent the first eight weeks in the mayor's office. Now I'm currently in OEI, Office of Equity and Inclusion, and it's really cool because I'm getting to work with them on the language access program, which is basically making city services more inclusive to those that don't speak English pretty well. Uh, I think that's incredibly rewarding because we do have a pretty big community of, you know, Spanish speakers, Vietnamese, and so on. So making city services accessible to them is something that's incredibly awesome. And I'm really glad that I had the opportunity to work with them on that. So. Wow, that is so great to hear. And I bet you a lot of native languages trying to be thrown in there. And yeah, stuff, yeah. You know, like Tewa, Ta, there's like three different ones or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we, Karis, we do a lot of work Karis, with yeah. the um, Office of Native American Affairs. So okay, cool. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That is so great to hear. And what department? I was at the Sunport. So um, you pretty much, I uh, got to talk to a lot of people and figure out what plans they have for, you know, renovations.
spacious the airport, like the dream of flight and things like that. And um, just making sure that we make people aware about it. And uh, yeah, it was, I honestly, I love the airport. I think the airport's great. I love the airport. Yeah. I just actually got back from Los Angeles this morning and I was like, oh, I'm gonna see Mayor Keller soon going down the escalator, you know, the famous photo. Quick show of hands, how many of you guys would run for like public servant office? Oh, nice. Nice, okay, okay. Okay. That's that's pretty impressive, actually. Most yeah. people, you know, after government, they're like, <laughs> yeah. After eight weeks of heavy metal, they're like, oh, I don't know. I don't need know. some other kind of music. Yeah, yeah. We need some other. I don't know. At that point, country or something. <laughs> metal over country. Metal over country. Oh wow! Oh. This is getting controversial. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm with you. <laughs> so looking back on your like when you were their age. Um, let me see, were you interested in politics at all? And you're from Albuquerque, is that correct? Or uh -huh. okay. Yeah, born and raised. I don't know exactly how old they are, but I could ballpark. Uh, you know, uh, I was probably off in a faraway place uh, called Cambodia, so I lived there for three years. Mm -hmm. And I, I started, a, a, there was a group of us, but we started this really cool project that sort of, I mean, it trained landmine victims to make websites back when, like, that was new because like i'm that old okay. so you know <laughs> this was like when websites were just invented kind of when it was but anyway so it was really cool but the point is um even then i was thinking about how one i wanted to move back home and i didn't want to leave and two i was like i have always personally i've always loved government just that sense of the community that ability to make a difference like even when i was a really little kid doing dorky things like watching c-span you know when i was in like third grade um <laughs> And so I was like, you know, I should probably just move back home and get somehow involved in government. So that's that was a realization to me that I kind of ignored in high school and college. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but it came back to me in my early 20s and guided the rest of my life. Another quick question. Did you start as an intern? So I did. I actually could not get like the internship they got. So I applied. I applied. Well, I mean, it was not at the city, but like I applied to the county in the city. And I, we were kind of just talking about this at a different meeting, but like, the county, the city, and the state. And I applied for like a bunch of different, like dozens of jobs, rejected for all of them. Then I applied for volunteer internships, rejected. And so I ended up one state senator, a guy named Cisco McSorley. He, he didn't know me at all, but he's like, yeah, you wanna just hang out with me and like do stuff for free? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, you're hired. <laughs> you know, like I was like, what? That, that was never supposed to be that hard. But I ended up shadowing him at the state legislature for two years. Okay. And that really is how I got to learn government. Cisco's great. He gave me a, actually a pass to meet Bernie Sanders when Bernie was running. So wow. that's the connection we have. So That's amazing. When you first started, did you see yourself becoming mayor? So, you know, I think uh, on the one hand, like I really just just wanted and still want to be like in an area of government that works for me where I can hopefully like do some good. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was never about like that actual office of mayor, but I would be, I'm gonna have to respect like my high school friends and my elementary school friends who all remind me that I said I wanted to be mayor like when I was a little kid. <laughs> so so um, I don't really remember it as well as they do, but they tell me that the first time I got it, they're like, oh, big surprise, you're mayor. So anyway. Um, so apparently like that that seed has been you know with me for a long time and because I did visit I had a school visit to the mayor's office in eighth grade and I remember all of it okay. and so it was Mayor Saavedra at the time but I do remember and I'm sure that was like part of it but like there's just something about city government that was so like in touch with our everyday life mm -hmm. you know whether it's streets or stop signs or parks you know or the zoo like all of that the airport and that definitely, you know, I mean, it was probably grade school and uh, elementary or uh, middle school when like those seeds were planted for me. How did your parents feel about, or I guess, a politi <laughs> how do they feel about that? And my parents really don't like politicians. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're like normal people. I mean, you know, yeah. so they are not at all political. And, you know, uh, my dad, he's, they're pretty old school. And so, but like in a, in, a, in a loving way, you know, they just want me to be happy. So they support it. But early yeah. on, they were just like, wow, I mean, well, you know, it's just, I mean, is that even a job? I mean, you know, all that kind of stuff. So. What are some issues um, that, that kind of keep you up at night that, you know, that you think about that are everyday struggles here in Albuquerque? What, what do you think about? I mean, I think the biggest one by far is actually addiction. Look, the hardest part of being mayor by far is dealing with loss of life. 
you know, and you see that whether it's an individual who's homeless or an individual, a pedestrian who gets hit um, or, you know, uh, in different law enforcement situations. But typically they're all related to, you know, the, the confluence of a weapon, maybe of domestic violence, but then something drug related. It's either one person is high and one's not, or it's a transaction involving drugs where there's a, you know, a fight and, uh, and then a gun's used and someone dies. That is by far the hardest part. And so that is, you know, that's like every night, you know, that's what, if nothing super bad happens, I'm grateful for it every night. And then in the morning, you know, sometimes you get those calls in the middle of the night, but in the morning when I wake up, I'm like, you know, check my phone, whatever, and I'm like, okay. Like there wasn't a, you know, major loss of life last night. Um, but obviously there is, you know, every couple of weeks. And so um, that's, you know, those are the things that are really, really tough. And I would also just add in, I think what psychologically is, it's like a good and a bad thing. You know, the mayor of Albuquerque, like I remember, you know, cause I was born and raised here. So like, I remember mayors have like a funny role in our city where everything is their fault. Like everything, yeah. you know, it's like the weather, you know, and like, you know, but the mayor also in Albuquerque in comparison to a lot of other New Mexico cities has way more responsibility mm -hmm. than really any other singular elected official. So it's not, you know, there are certainly like legislatures and council, but like, and it's just always been that way, at least in the modern era. So you have that on the one hand, like you do have the power to like work on those issues. And that's what I love about the job. But on the other hand, it's like, you know, when there's national issues around fentanyl, you know, it's not like I have some amazing answer that is gonna fix fentanyl. Um, so, you know, I think you see that dynamic a lot. And so on the, on the one hand, it's like the upside because you have that ability to make a difference. But the downside is it's like, man, sometimes just a tidal wave of addiction and fentanyl in our community. And yeah, it's not like I have 10 answers on how to deal with that because these are really tough national problems. What are some accomplishments and stuff that you're proud of about your vision that you've succeeded here in Albuquerque? Like you know, I think we're finally uh, at this stage. It, it took a little longer. I like to blame COVID, but it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, when I took in this, took on this job, the idea was the city was really going in the wrong direction for a lot of reasons, for equity and inclusion, for, you know, businesses, because like the art project had sort of destroyed Central and crime was going up and homelessness was going up. And unfortunately, like those things have continued. But this year, this year is the first year where we're turning that ship around. So all of a sudden, we're seeing things finally going in the right direction. Now we have a long way to go. That's the issue. But for the first time, like income is at, like on average is going up. Population is going up. We haven't seen these in like a decade. Crime is actually down. It might be five or ten percent. But like again, we it's always been up. So like you know, um, and even even our homeless count again, it's still way too big. But it's lower than the last one. So and we haven't seen that for about ten years. So this is the first time in a decade where I feel like we're turning the corner. So, and some of it too is about like love of life in our city. You know, building a stadium for the United or the rail trail, which is this cool pedestrian pathway connecting uh, downtown and old town and doing it in an equitable, inclusive way that's gonna support affordable housing. And our gateway center, which is the largest investment in our unhoused community in the history of New Mexico. All of these are happening. They're just like taking a little longer than I wanted them to. Yeah. And our new department, the ACS department, that's the community safety department that sends social workers instead of law enforcement. So all these things are now real. We just got to see them through to full fruition. So having worked in city government, what's, what's kind of your perspective? You guys can just kind of shout out answers. I didn't know a lot about city government before I started working here, but what I had heard was like kind of negative just from peers and like family members and just, you know, like, oh, the city is like, the city isn't doing this, the city isn't doing this, like we have all these problems. And then I came here and I realized like everybody I've met cares so much about every person in the city. And like everybody I've met is working so hard all the time. I'm like, this is like an, like an efficient machine. It doesn't always seem that way from the outside, but people just really care. People are working really hard. And I, I wish that like, I think there's sometimes a disconnect from the public and maybe the government of like just how much the government really cares and is working for you, not like, against you. We're going to be working on a project actually um, to reach younger generations to keep talent here. Like I really feel that, you know, New Mexico is a beautiful place to live, um, but we sometimes lose a lot of our talents to neighboring states, which is unfortunate. To echo off of what Diana said, I really want to see young people become more involved in the city government. 
Um, it can be a bit, uh, you know, a delusion of young people. It can make it seem intimidating a little intimidating. bit. Intimidating. Yeah. They may not want to get involved in the political process, but mm -hmm. we are going to be the generation that inherits many of these issues mm -hmm. and these challenges. So it's incredibly important that we get young people involved. And this program is like an awesome example of how to do that. Mayor Keller, can you look into the camera there and just talk to the youth, New Mexican citizens, and just kind of talk to them about why they should get engaged and active in, in social issues and politics? Sure. Well, I want to acknowledge like being young, it's probably not the first thing on your mind, and that's okay. But I think at some point, uh, what I would remember is that like, we're all in this together. So no matter what age you are, but even when you're young, like if you're in high school or college or even younger, uh, when you think about your classmates, and you think about what their family does and what your family does each and every day, there's actually one area of government that affects you more than any other area. And it's the opposite of what you think. You might think it's like the federal government and the president and international stuff. But like at the end of the day, when you think about your family, like every day doing what you do in our city. It's city government. And so remember that, give city government a chance. So I have some suggestions for Albuquerque. I think the city should give hygiene products for female bathrooms, mm -hmm. um, free condoms maybe for high schoolers, um, but they have to be skins. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think I know what that means. <laughs> it's just a brand of condom. I'd, it sounds funnier in my head, to be honest. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm out of date on my brands. <laughs> no, I, mean, I think we just ended it there. <laughs> okay, and then the second suggestion is a tax, uh, excess tax on people over 65 years old. Like they, they'll start paying for just, our, just for their own. Yeah, it's just an ageist tax. Just an ageist just straight tax. up. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that we, only the young people. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for having us in Command Central in Albuquerque City Hall. Thank you all for coming out and hanging out with us today. And thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Have a nice week, girl.